Hey, it's Derek from WatchMeCode.net. So in my continuing effort to learn functional JavaScript and functional programming through JavaScript, really, I've been kind of stuck on this idea of currying for a while. I've done a previous video where I talked about how I created my own curry function, and then I had yet another video where I talked about my little aha moment on realizing what currying really is. But those two things aren't really enough to satisfy my curiosity and my desire to, to know what currying is and how it's really useful. So I kept digging. I kept looking for places where I could actually use currying. And through the help of this amazingly awesome video from MPJ over at Fun Fun Function, I found a pretty good use for currying. And so I wanted to show you my own use of it shortly after I watched that video. I found a place where I was actually really excited about trying to use currying. So let's take a look at the situation that I found myself in and I'll show you at least one place where I think currying is actually really useful even if you're not doing functional programming anywhere else. So here in my code, I've got this filter words method that I wrote, and it's a really, it's, it's an okay method. It works. It takes this raw text, whatever you want to uh, have as your plain text, and it takes an array of words to remove, and then it just removes those words from the raw text that you supplied. So over here in this code, I have a basic use of that. I'm importing the filter words. I've got a, a, a string that I want to have uh, filtered, I've got some words that I want to remove from that string. I create an output and everything is pretty much good to go. I can run node index.js and we get from this is a test of rocks, removing is a and of, and we get this test rocks. So there we go, pretty simple use of a filter words function. Now I wrote this fun function for one of my actual projects for my client and I probably could have found a library to do this for me, but it was a, a fun little exercise in and of itself, and I didn't really see a need to bring in a whole library at this point. But shortly after creating this function and putting it in place, I found myself needing to do more than just filter this one string. I, what I really needed to do was filter an entire array of strings, you know, multiple lines of text that all need to have the same basic words or characters or whatever it was removed. And so I ran into a situation where I thought, hmm, you know, maybe this is something where currying would actually be a little beneficial. So looking at this version of the code, we can see that I have an array of strings, I still have the same words to remove, and I have a basic map running over the things to filter. So the things to filter is going to take each one of these strings from this array, it's going to produce this text variable inside the callback function, and I'm going to return filter words, passing in the text, and then passing in the words to remove. Overall, this works pretty well. This is a simple map that creates a new array out of the existing array, removing the is, a, and of from all of those strings. Not a terribly big deal at this point. But I got to thinking, you know, I don't really like the way this looks, and thinking about that video from MPJ again, I thought, well, maybe I could use currying here at this point. So I brought in my curry function, the one that I had previously written inside of my own uh, uh, video that I showed you uh, a few weeks ago, and I decided I wanted to, to use that just to see if it works. So I brought in dot slash curry, and I looked at this and thought to myself, okay, if I want to curry, what am I going to curry here? I'm going to try and curry the filter words so that I can reduce the amount of code that I have right here. Really what I want is just a single callback method right here. I don't want to have this function that ends up calling another function. I want to have a named callback. But in order to do that, to put filter words right here, well, I need the words to remove to be set up appropriately. But the way this is set up right now, the positioning of the parameters is backwards. I want these words to remove to be the first parameter of the curried version of filter words. So before I do anything else, I need to go into filter words and change these parameters. And I'm doing this because it's important to get the parameters in order because currying requires parameters to be positional. 
And a lot of other languages or programming paradigms really like fluent interfaces in object-oriented programming or the, the builder um, pattern, you'll have parameters that are named by a function. You can have this.foo, parameter.bar, parameter.baz, parameter, and you pass in parameters essentially by name by making function calls. But currying is slightly different in that you pass things in positionally. And so the, the first parameter you're passing into a function is going to be a parameter that will have a closure wrapped around it and it will stick there. And you'll have a function that always applies that argument, that value that you supplied as the first parameter to the final function. Well, that being the case, the thing that I want to reuse over and over again is the words to remove. It's this list of is, a, and of. So I want to have my parameters swapped. I want to have from what they were originally. I want to have words to remove as the first parameter and raw text as the second parameter. Easy enough change inside of my function definition. Let's apply this to my code out here now. So at first I'm going to say var curried filter words equals curry filter words. And I do that because, well, I need the curried version of filter words. Now that I have curried filter words, I want to have a function that applies words to remove all the time as the first parameter. So I'll say var remove is a of, and I'll assign that to curried filter words, and I'll pass in words to remove. So now I have a curried version of filter words. I have a list of words that I want to remove, and I have an application of that as my first call to the curried filter words. So this remove is a of will always remove the words is a and of from any string that is passed in. So I can call remove is a of and I can pass in foo a is of bar. And I can comment out or delete this other code real quick. I can call this and when I run it, uh, raw text split is not a function. I probably did that wrong. Let me fix this real quick. And it turns out everything was actually just fine. I just forgot to save the change that I made to the filter words. All right, so let me clear this screen out and rerun this real quick. So when I run the node index.js, it returns foo bar because I have curried filter words applied with words to remove. That produces the remove is a of function. And when I call remove is a of and I pass in this string, foo a, a is of bar, I end up with foo bar as the output. So now let's get back to the map that I had previously performed on things to filter. So instead of creating a function inside of the things to filter dot map, all I really need to do is call remove is a of. So I can say things to filter dot map remove is a of. Now as the map iterates over the array, it's going to call remove is a of on the individual line inside of this array. What it produces as output is going to be a new array that has all of those strings filtered. So I save this, run back to the console, and everything is working exactly as I expected. So this is pretty slick. I really like the way this works, quite honestly. I like the way this code looks better than the previous code that I had shown here. It's a little bit easier for me to read. It's also a lot more reusable. I can take this remove is a of, and I can apply this function anywhere that I want to remove those three words. And I can reapply you know, the curried filter words using any list of words that I want as well. It provides a lot of flexibility, frankly, and a little bit nicer code as I'm showing right here with the things to filter dot map. It's just a little bit easier to read, but more importantly, and the point of this video, of course, is that it's a real world use of currying. I've reduced the amount of code that I'm seeing on screen here and, and made something a little bit nicer, and I'm quite happy with that. Now, I have to say, there are other places where I've tried to do currying, 
And it hasn't always worked out quite so well. There was one particular instance where I had an object that took in a constructor function parameter of, of a database connection, and then the methods down below on that object used that connection. And I thought to myself, hey, all I'm really doing is passing this dot connection through these methods on this object. I wonder if I could curry this. And so I did. I changed it from an object to a curried function that took the connection as the first parameter, and then the rest of the parameters, I curried that. And it technically worked. I had a curried version of that function, but when it came down to the end, the code ended up being a little more difficult to read. I kind of threw that currying toy down on the ground and smashed it with a hammer and really didn't like the results that I found. But fortunately, there are things like this simple little map use where currying is actually quite useful. So hopefully this will give you some inspiration, some idea of where something like currying can really be used in your day-to-day -day applications. And if you haven't gotten you up to speed on currying yet, be sure to check out the previous videos that I have in my functional JavaScript playlist here. I've got a great webinar with Chet Harrison, but I've also got a couple of more videos on currying. So thanks for watching and happy JavaScripting.